before they're obsolete. Is it abundance? Absolutely not. Abundance, as based on the laws of supply and demand, is actually a negative thing. If a diamond company finds ten times the usual amount of diamonds during their mining, it means the supply of diamonds has increased, which means the cost and profit per diamond drops. The fact is, efficiency, sustainability, and abundance are enemies of profit. To put it into a word, it is the mechanism of scarcity that increases profits. What is scarcity? Based on keeping products valuable, slowing up production on oil raises the price. Maintaining scarcity of diamonds keeps the price high. They burn diamonds at the Kimberley diamond mines and made of carbon that keeps the price up. So then, what does it mean for society when scarcity, either produced naturally or through manipulation, is a beneficial condition for industry? It means that sustainability and abundance will never ever occur in a profit system for it simply goes against the very nature of the structure. Therefore, it is impossible to have a world without war or poverty. It is impossible to continually advance technology to its most efficient and productive states. And most dramatically, it is impossible to expect human beings to behave in truly ethical or decent ways. People use the word instinct because they can't account for the behavior. They sit back and they evaluate with their lack of knowledge, you know, and they say things like, humans are built a certain way, greed is a natural thing, as though they worked for years on it, and it's no more natural than wearing clothing. What we want to do is to eliminate the causes of the problems eliminate the processes that, that produce greed and bigotry and prejudice and um, people taking advantage of one another and elitism, eliminating the need for prisons and welfare. We have always had these problems because we have always lived within scarcity and barter and monetary systems that produce scarcity. If you eradicate the conditions that generate what you call socially offensive behavior that does not exist. The guy said, well, isn't that inborn? No, it's not. There is no human nature. There's human behavior, and that's always been changed throughout history. You're not born with bigotry and greed and corruption and hatred. You, you pick that up within the society. War, poverty, corruption, hunger, misery, human suffering will not change in a monetary system. That is, there'll be very little significant change. It's going to take the redesign of our culture, our values, and it has to be related to the carrying capacity of the earth, not some human opinion or some politician's notions of the way the world ought to be, or some religious notions of the conduct of human affairs. And that's what the Venus Project is about. The society that we're about to talk about is a society that is free of all the old superstitions, incarceration, prisons, police, cruelty, and law. All laws will disappear, and the professions will disappear that are no longer valid, such as stockbrokers, bankers, advertising, gone forever, because it's no longer relevant. When we understand that it is technology devised by human ingenuity which frees humanity and increases our quality of life, we then realize that the most important focus we can have is on the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. For it is from these natural resources we gain the materials to continue our path of prosperity. Understanding this, we then see that money fundamentally exists as a barrier to these resources for virtually everything has a financial cost. And why do we need money to obtain these resources? Because of real or assumed scarcity. 
We don't usually pay for air and tap water because it is in such high abundance, selling it would be pointless. So then, logically speaking, if resources and technologies applicable to creating everything in our societies, such as houses, cities and transportation, were in high enough abundance, there would be no reason to sell anything. Likewise, if automation and machinery was so technologically advanced as to relieve human beings of labor, there would be no reason to have a job. And with these social aspects taken care of, there would be no reason to have money at all. So the ultimate question remains. Do we on earth have enough resources and technological understanding to create a society of such abundance that everything we have now could be available without a price tag and without the need for submission through employment? Yes, we do. We have the resources and technology to enable this at a minimum, along with the ability to raise the standard of living so high that people in the future will look back at our civilization now and gawk at how primitive and immature our society was. What the Venus Project proposes is an entirely different system that's updated to present day knowledge. We've never given scientists the problem of how do you design a society which would eliminate boring and monotonous jobs, that would eliminate accidents in transportation, that would enable people to have a high standard of living, that would eliminate poisons in our food, that would give us other sources of energy that are clean and efficient. We can do that out there. The major difference between a resource-based economy and a monetary system is that a resource-based economy is really concerned with people and their well-being, where a monetary system has become so distorted that the concerns of the people are really secondary, if they're there at all. The products that are turned out are for how much money you can get. If there is a problem in society and you can't earn money from solving that problem, then it won't be done. The resource-based economy is really not close to anything that's been tried. And with all our technology today, we can create abundance. It could be used to improve everyone's lifestyle. Abundance all over the world if we use our technology wisely and maintain the environment. It's a very different system, and it's very hard to talk about because the public is not that well enough informed as to the state of technology. At present, we don't have to burn fossil fuels. We don't have to use anything that would contaminate the environment. There are many sources of energy available. Alternative energy solutions pushed by the establishment, such as hydrogen, biomass, and even nuclear, are highly insufficient, dangerous, and exist only to perpetuate the profit structure that industry has created. When we look beyond the propaganda and self-serving solutions put forth by the energy companies, we find a seemingly endless stream of clean, abundant, and renewable energy for generating power. Solar and wind energy are well known to the public, but the true potential of these mediums remains unexpressed. Solar energy, derived from the sun, has such abundance that one hour of light at high noon contains more energy than what the entire world consumes in a year. If we could capture one hundredth of a percent of this energy, the world would never have to use oil, gas, or anything else. The question then is not availability, but the technology to harness it. And there are many advanced mediums today which could accomplish just that if they were not hindered by the need to compete for market share with the established energy power structures. Then there's wind energy. Wind energy has long been denounced as weak and due to being location driven, impractical. This is simply not true. The U.S. Department of Energy admitted in 2007 that if wind was fully harvested in just three of America's 50 states, it could power the entire nation. And then there are the rather unknown mediums of tidal and wave power. Tidal power is derived from tidal shifts in the ocean. Installing turbines which capture this movement generates energy. In the United Kingdom, 42 sites are currently noted as available, forecasting that 34% of all the UK's energy